Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Innocent Life. It is Friday, and I figured I would do a video before we get on to Sunday's video where we will be attending the Spring Festival. Because I've been pretty busy playing off screen in the last week or so. My cooking has gotten much better. I've been doing very well with mining. My crops are looking really well, and I've also got a big chunk of cash in my wallet. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see if I need to water anything. Doesn't look like it. But as we can see here, we have uh, quite a bit growing. Still have the asparagus. I do believe that these are turnips. And then these are strawberry plants. I haven't planted anything in a couple of days just because we are closing in on the end of the season. Spring will be over on day 35. So I'm just going to stick with what I have for now because at this point I have shipped everything that is needed for the Spring Festival. I have shipped every single crop that is available in this season. So everything else that I have growing right now is basically just for some additional profits. I actually lied, it looks like I need to water these plants up here, so I'll just do that really quick and then we will go and see what else is going on. I want to go to the supermarket before the holiday starts up, which is really the main reason that I wanted to record. We now have enough money for the scale pack, which is going to be our next big purchase. So by the time we walk over to Volcano Town, the store should be open since it does take quite a while to actually walk to where we need to go. So every day has been pretty much the same, just watering and harvesting crops. Been doing quite a bit of mining as well to try and find a little bit of extra profit, a couple of stones and gems and rocks to sell. Been increasing the level of my hammer by practicing with it. And I've been doing a lot of cooking as well. Just something to pass the time, to fill up our recipe book with, and to get my cooking experience up. So there we are, 10 o'clock just hit, which means that the supermarket should now be open for business, so we'll go and take a quick look there. I do believe the scale pack costs about $3,000-ish, maybe, so we definitely have enough. Yeah, oh, $2,000 ish. The scale pack is just under two grand. Used for harvesting wild plants and fruit. So let's go ahead and pick that up. There's not really much sense in buying anything else. We already have a basket, and I'm not really gonna bother with the sickle at the moment. We have all of the different crops available in the season, and I think it's probably too late to plant flowers just because we are so late into spring. But perhaps that's something that we should be looking into for summer. Maybe get a few uh, more patches of land to use and we can plant some nice flowers. So we'll just pick up the scale pack today. Spend a little bit of our money on that. We still have plenty of money if there's anything else that we need to buy. And the scale pack, I think, is back at our home. So we'll have to go and pick that up. It also looks like I didn't bother to get rid of my mining stuff last time I went, so I should probably go and do that. I'm not going to bother too much with doing my routine today. I'm not going to mine or anything like that, because I feel like that's sort of stuff that I should be doing off screen, unless I'm mining something that's really important or showing off some sort of secret or unlocking a new area. The routine itself of just breaking rocks for a few hours doesn't really provide anything interesting in terms of gameplay. And 
I feel like this is a series that could go on for a really, really long time if I were to sort of do all of those menial things in videos. So I kind of like to plan out what it is I'm going to talk about and do it as efficiently as possible. So I need to access my storage and I also need to make some room in my inventory. So we'll go up to the farm first and I'll get rid of all my ores. I'll put them in the shipping box. All right, and then from here, I should be able to access my item inventory. So here's the scale pack. We're gonna take that out and uh, we'll have a look at it real quick. It doesn't actually have much information, but what we're able to do is fill up the scale pack with uh, 3,000 grams worth of things. And then when we have items in our scale pack, it'll tell us what we have in it and how much we're gonna go get for it once we ship it. Kind of similar to how the mining aspect of things work. It stacks the ores and the rocks in your inventory and then you can hover over it, uh, see how much you have and how much money it's actually going to get you. So I guess at this point it would be a really good idea to kind of go into the forest. Since we haven't really gone over the bridge since we were allowed to past our first week here at the ruins. So there's a couple of different things to look at in the area. If we swing down this path here, our first left as we enter, you can read the signs to see kind of where you're at. This area here is a little riverbank area. And this is actually where the bridge is. Now this is broken, of course, and Dr. Hope mentioned that nobody has had any time to fix it because they've been so busy with the spring festival. But as soon as the spring festival is over, hopefully that way is going to be open for us and that will give us even more area to actually explore. So that's kind of a key area to remember for later because we are going to be getting that bri bridge fixed at some point. And it's a pretty straightforward area. You basically just have to follow the paths and it will let you go to another area. This is a waterfront area with a ton of strange moss. So if you ran out of strange moss to pick at the waterfront near your home at the ruins, you can come here and pick more. So this is a very, very good source of strange moss if you need it. There are also some trees here and we'll be able to get some fruit off those in fall. And then finally, as we go very, very deep into this area behind our home, we're going to get into the forest. And this is where our scale pack is gonna come in handy. Now, normally, if you try to pick mushrooms, it won't let you. It'll say that you need a scale pack and you're not able to pick these up. But with the scale pack uh, in your inventory, you should be able to just go through and pick up mushrooms. And once you have enough in your pack, it should tell you that you're not able to carry any more. Now from what I remember, mushrooms don't actually get you a lot of money, but again, it's just sort of an extra thing that you can do to pass the time and to gather your funds up. Sort of like mining, there is very little area to mine at the moment, and a lot of the stuff we get doesn't net us a lot of cash, but it is worth doing just to pass the time, to get the experience, etc, etc. You guys get the general idea here. There's quite a bit that we can actually pick before our pack gets full. And there are some more mushrooms up here in the clearing. And I do believe that the explanation for why the scale pack has a weight limit was that the villagers want us to cons conserve. They don't want us to pick all of the mushrooms at once. You know, we don't want to be too greedy or anything like that, but 
as you can see here, it is pretty damn generous on what how much you can actually pick. It is going to get dark soon. Even if you harvest this, you won't be able to fit it in your scale pack. Alright, so there we go. We have capped. We have reached the limit. And I, as I was saying, it is going to get dark soon, so that was actually some pretty decent timing. By the time we get back to the ruins, it should be dark out, but that's okay. We've pretty much seen everything that there is to see in the area. There are a lot of other little things. Moonlight has a few pieces of artwork out in the forest that we can take a look at. There are some trees that we're going to be able to harvest some fruit off of. One of Moonlight's work of art, for example, are uh, these things here. They're kind of like telephones that he has attached to trees. And he has a pedestal here with an inscription that you can read. Uh, this is his artwork of the Whispering Trees. So that's sort of just more or less a random thing. It doesn't do anything else other than just be there for cosmetic purposes. But I do believe that if you inspect all of Moonlight's uh, placards, you get the entry in the dictionary that Liberta gave us. So examining that stuff is kind of just more or less for 100% completion. So I'm just going to take a look at the scale pack here. You can see that we picked 3,000 grams worth of mushrooms, but we're only going to get $150 for it. So really not profitable. It'll be up to you to shuffle your chore queue around. You have a lot of options now if you want to focus on mining or gathering or crops. So it'll be up to you to kind of pick what it is that you uh, want to do. So we'll go ahead and empty the contents of the scale pack into the shipping pod. Obviously because mushrooms are food, we're going to put it into the food bin and not the item bin. And then finally, I'm just going to go back down to my room for a moment. And I just want to talk a little bit about cooking. I guess I'll just do some cooking while I do that. Usually in these videos, I just make one dish before I start the day, you know, just kind of to eat and get my cooking points up. But you can cook as many times a day as you'd like. It's unlimited. It doesn't take any sort of stamina or PP. And because cooking in this game doesn't require you to use any sort of ingredients, there, the sky is pretty much the limit. You can cook anything and everything on your list. And that will allow you to get your cooking points up. It also does, in some cases, raise your creativity. And the more you cook a dish, the more creative you're going to get with it, the better you're going to get at, at it. And you will be able to add more entries to the dictionary. We did go through the list of recipes, and as we saw, there are a lot of them. And because you only get a set of new recipes each week, it might be worth it to work on the ones you already have in anticipation for the new ones that you're going to be getting the following week. So that was something interesting that I found out. I didn't want to just sit here and cook for an entire video though, because again, like mining, that is sort of a, a tedious activity and I don't think it would be much fun to watch for a long period of time, but I just thought I would at least talk about that in case anybody was under the impression that cooking is somehow limited or you can only do it once a day or something like that. I only really wanted to talk about those few things in this video. I'm just going to play through Saturday, and then when Sunday rolls around, we are going to be going to our first festival in-game. So I hope that you guys are excited about that. I know I am. I want to thank you all so very much for watching, and I hope that I will see you next time.